Hello, this video is just a, basically a continuation of my other video because I forgot to take these antennas with me last time. Uh, so you can watch the beginning part of my video from a couple of days ago if you want to know what it is that I'm doing. Uh, so the only thing that I did today that was different is I put this one on my transmitter box. So this is a four lobe uh, skew planer, I think. And I put this one on the receiver. So this is a cloverleaf and they are circularly polarized um, so yeah it wasn't it wasn't really worth another video but I thought I'd make another video because if you saw the last one and you wanted to see this as well well you're probably going to be looking at my YouTube channel uh, so anyway I put in some boring waffling of me looking at the little OLED screen again uh, if you want to see that keep watching uh, if you want to see the last video you can click here if you want to just go to the results that I got with these you can click there Okay, well, we're back down here again, and I've put my antenna up there where it was yesterday. And I just thought I'd mention that one thing I noticed immediately was that, on average, the, um, the packet rate that we're getting from here, as you can see there, we saw 121, 122. I've never seen that with the rubber duck antenna. So it seems that uh, even at zero distance, or almost zero distance, we are getting a better transmission rate than with the other antenna. 200 meters. Practically unchanged. Uh, if I don't hold the Nexus 7 to it, we get about 120 again. There you go. Well, then you can't see it. <laughs> 500 meters. It's a bit patchy, but if I turn over that way a little, I'm back to the normal rate of about 100, so about 118 average. Maybe not quite that much. Seems to be a little bit better when I'm not holding the camera there. So still not much different to the rubber duck antenna at this point, although it doesn't change hardly at all when I change the orientation, which is the point. And if I hold it the opposite way, we're still getting 114. So it's a lot better in that respect. Okay, we're at 750 meters, and packet rate is still about the same, although it is still occasionally higher than it was with the rubber duck, so 123, that's pretty good. 114, 122, so we're getting values of 120 and more still. Okay, so we're here at the one kilometer mark. As you recall, there's that huge radio uh, power line thing there and we're getting 70 ish packets per second when I face it in the in that direction if I turn a little more over to here we're getting close to zero 10 12 better than with the rubber duck still but the interesting thing is that with the rubber duck I could also get let's see if I can shade that with the rubber duck, I could also get a certain number of packets in this direction, maybe about 60 or so. But the angle that I had to hold it on to get them was very, very narrow. And as you can see, I can move around a bit here. And we're getting a decent number of packets, see 80, 50, and over quite a wide range of angles. 90, 35, 36, okay, it's not, it's not great, but uh, that's pretty good there, 100 packets per second. So you can see that I've turned through about 90 degrees here, and I'm still getting decent signal, which was way, way better than the rubber duck antenna. And if I hold it up like this, you can see 
117 there, 114, so this is really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, obviously it still has a bit of directional, like, uh, what do you call it, gain, like, prefers to be held one way than the other, but the range within which it works well is much, much wider. Zero there, huh? So if you hold it just right, you can still get 110 or so packets. So I think it's worth trying a little bit further and see how how it goes at say 1,200 meters or something. All right, this is 1,100 meters. This is about as far as I could get with still some signal. And as you can see here, we're getting sort of 10 to 30 or so. But I have to really, really hold it in a certain angle. Uh, if I go off just a little bit, it drops. Oh, I got 50 there. Okay. See, whatever I'm about to show you, it wants to do something else, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> all right. We're still getting 40. Okay, 40. Oh, it's going up. Why is it going up? But most of the time, it's a solid zero. So for most of the rest of the angle range, say over here. It's just zero. So there's a certain a certain angle range of about 10 to 15 degrees here that if I hold it I can get a decent signal. Uh, so now we are going through quite a lot of trees and also we're just about going through that power line thing as well. Uh, so yeah, this is the outer limits of any signal we're going to get I think. All right, just just one more thing. I was on my way back, and I'm a bit at about 450 meters or so here. And I just thought I should mention that, even though with almost all orientations we're getting 115 or so packets, if I hold it so that uh, so the antenna is is down there, basically in the middle of the frame at the moment. Now if I hold this, so that the shaft of the antenna is pointing directly at it like that, look at this. <laughs> it doesn't want to do whatever I'm trying to show you, but if I point it directly at the, at the receiver, it goes down to practically zero. Let's see if I can do it while I'm not holding the camera, I mean not looking at the camera. But again, when I hold the Nexus 7 up, it seems to improve things. Now it seems fine. Okay, 36, 16. Okay, so there it is. So 16, 14, 40. Oh man, you have to hold it just right, but you can get it to go down to close to zero. So I just thought I should point that out. Oh, and it also, if you point it exactly away, of course you're not going to be able to see anything on the screen there, but it's uh, zero at the moment. And it's a fairly solid zero actually, it's just staying on zero. So now I'm pointing it as directly away from the receiver as I can. And it's a big fat zero. <laughs> so what I was trying to explain there at the end, but I wasn't explaining very well, is that when the antennas are oriented like that, or like that, is the problem. So when the shaft of one of them is pointing at the, at the other one, uh, seemed to be what was giving me problems there. Anyway, so this is the overall results. Uh, as you can see, the cloverleaf skew planer combination is just a little bit better than the rubber duck. At least that's how it looks on this graph. But remember that the cloverleaf skew planer combination was able to perform pretty much the same in any orientation, whereas the rubber duck had to be held in the same orientation as the other antenna to get this. Uh, this kind of result. 
and after 750 meters unfortunately I, I couldn't really get any clear line of sight so those values if you had a 100% clear line of sight I'm pretty sure the values wouldn't be quite that bad and they wouldn't drop off so suddenly after 750 meters but uh, that's as good as I can do where I live unfortunately now just before I finish up this test I wanted to share some more data that I made because I noticed when I was making the sketches to do the distance test that when I changed the packet size I got slightly different results for the packets per second and the latency and all those readings uh, I didn't worry about it too much for that test because I just wanted to keep the same size packets and test what happens when distance changes but what I have here is the results of what happens when the packet size changes so this is distance is not a not a factor here these were just the two radio modules were sitting side by side on the desk um, and I was using six bytes for my packets in the distance test that we just saw and I did that mainly because I was having trouble fitting everything into memory with the GPS uh, code and the OLED screen code and everything uh, so I just used fairly small packet sizes um, but anyway so I did this test here afterwards and I was planning just to do 6, 12, 18, 24 and 30 bytes so just increasing in 6 byte steps just to see how the uh, throughput rate was affected but the numbers I got were super super strange super weird as you can see here um, so the, the most important one is the blue one here packets per second uh, so we were using 6 bytes per packet there, that's what we were doing in the distance test and heading down to 16 bytes it just gets worse and worse and worse and then all of a sudden from 17 bytes it jumps up to being very very good again in fact actually better than what we were seeing in the distance test so these are the best values here 17, 18 through to about, 100, uh, through to about 21 bytes per packet it is actually very very good um, and then after here this is so from 25 bytes onwards I could not get anything to send whatsoever uh, so I thought these things were supposed to be able to send packets up to 32 bytes but that's not my experience packets up to 24 bytes uh, is all they seem to do so perhaps that 32 byte figure is factoring in some um, overhead that the protocol has to manage itself. I, do, I don't. I don't recall reading that anywhere. I thought the 32 bytes was um, completely like user usable for the for the user. Um, but anyway, so just to show you um, what that comes from, uh, this is the struct that I was sending. Uh, so I had this timestamp in here, that was just what I was using to check the latency. Uh, very crude, but uh, yeah, probably not very important. Not Shouldn't pay too much attention to it. So to increase the packet size, I was just increasing this number here. So uh, 11 bytes of dummy data plus 4 bytes for the timestamp. So this would be a 15 byte packet. So that's what I was doing to um, change the packet size. This is the This is the entirety of the sketch that runs on the receiver by the way it just receives the data and sends it straight back so anyway I've put the source code in the description and if anybody wants to try something like this and see if they get this super strange result as well um, yeah please <laughs> let me know show me that I'm not crazy I, I tested this over and over again it was so weird that uh, I just had to go back and double check everything but definitely yeah heading towards a 16 byte packet there is just really really bad so 10 packets per second when the two radio modules are sitting right next to each other very strange um, perhaps I missed something in the data sheet I don't know but that's what I got so anyway enough waffling uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you later